Hello there, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I have some slightly belated news for you. That is, Godot is finally in beta, and this has some huge ramifications for this exact here channel. Now, first off, let me apologize for not uh, bringing this news up earlier. It actually happened the very end of November, um, but unfortunately, I didn't share it then for a couple of reasons. First off, I've been struggling with a really nasty cold, so I haven't really been doing that many videos. But second is, I've been diving into Godot um, because this is the moment I've been waiting for. Now, one of the big things about Beta 1, there's not actually a whole lot of new in beta one um, there's some stuff and we'll talk about that later on in this video but the key thing with uh, beta one Godot 3 release is this is the one with the feature freeze this means no new functionality is going to be added between now and Godot 3.0 so what does that mean in the end? Well, that means I can start doing tutorials. Now, I hate doing tutorials during uh, like release candidates or earlier, because basically that means that the UI can completely change and I've wasted my time completely. So now that we are in feature freeze, the number of changes will be more about, you know, if there's a bad usability problem, the UI might change a little bit. But for the most part, what I do in a tutorial should match what you get as an end user when you download Godot 3.0. So this means I will be starting a new tutorial series on Godot 3.0. And this is actually going to be the focus of the channel probably for at least the next month and a little bit. Don't worry, I'll have other coverage in there. And I'm just finishing up, uh, for example, a hands-on with or a closer look at GameMaker, for example. There are other projects that I'll be working on, but my primary focus is by far and away going to be Godot 3 for the next month or two. And on top of that, I'm actually planning to write a book. Uh, an ebook in this particular case. Print books are pretty much dead these days. Um, so I'm going to be doing it um, pretty much trying to keep parallel between the video series I do here on um, uh, you know, Game From Scratch YouTube channel and the book. They're going to try and cover the same basic material as I write it. And additionally, I will be making chapters available to patrons um, in rough form as I publish them. They're gonna be very rough, the work in progress, but if you're interested in getting behind that or interested in supporting me, do be sure to check out uh, Patreon. So hopefully that will be coming up soon. I'm working, my primary work over the holiday is definitely going to be Godot content, both video tutorials and the corresponding ebook I'm writing to go with it. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you. So without further ado, let's get back into what exactly is in Godot 3.0. And the big features are Bullet is now in, Onion Skinning is now available, and Tile Mapping is there, and now you can do enhanced debugging with the Remote Scene Tree Edit, uh, plus Code Folding in the Editor and Pascal Case. Uh, we'll jump over into Godot and we'll look at a couple of these things. Um, I'm not going to show you Auto Tiling because unfortunately Unfortunately, I haven't figured it out yet, uh, but basically auto tiling is allows you to paint tile sets so that they automatically, so you say you've got water and land edges and you paint with the land edge, it will automatically fill in the blank space with the corresponding water, etc. It's, it's a way of um, creating and painting with tile maps in a much faster manner. Another change in this one was, if we go in here to editor settings, oh sorry, uh, project settings, and we go down to the physics da, 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 for 3D, only 3D by the way. You'll notice now here there's a new toggle category for physics engine and it's set to default. And the default I believe now is bullet. And that is a pretty big change. Basically until now, Godot has used its own physics engine to do 3D physics. And you know, not a bash on Godot, but it hasn't been the greatest implementation. Whereas at the same time, the Physics, the bullet physics engine is very, very industry tested. It's used in a number of uh, commercial game and film projects already, integrated to a number of different game engines, and it's completely open source. So wisely, Godot decided to implement that as their backend physics engine. Um, right now, it's more of a feature complete comparison to what already exists. So basically, if you use the physics engine as it was, it should stay pretty much the same. It's just different calculations behind the scenes. So your simulation may run a little bit differently, because there's different maps being used, uh, but the functionality is pretty much the same. However, going forward, we should see some cool options because of the bullet integration. Things like fabric simulations, etc. Stuff that bullet is capable of that the built-in system wasn't. And I think you'll also see better fidelity in your existing physics simulations. Um, so it doesn't have a lot of UI ramifications to you, but it is a big change and is a nice development on the Godot front. Um, the other thing is onion skinning. Now onion skinning, again, is not something I can easily show you, but it's animation based. So basically if you've got an animation 
So bring up the animation tool here. Right now there is this new box right here. I haven't actually created one, so let me go ahead and um, Alright, it's gonna take me too long to Alright, that should do it. Um, if you have an animated sprite going on, you come in here to the animation section, there is this new menu down here for enabling onion skinning. Now onion skinning is sort of a, um, it's a term from, you know, paper flip animation style things where you could actually see if you put them over top of each other, if you drew them on onion paper, you could see the animation as it was going over time. So you could see, you know, the frames that came before and the frames that came after and it allows you to basically create smoother animation. Um, again, not a world changing thing, uh, but it was able to be slipped in there at the last minute. Now on top of that, there is also the um, uh, Pascal case for C sharp. Um, yeah, that's not too, too exciting. Neither is code folding. We'll show you code, show you code folding very quickly here. Uh, you attach a script in, you edit your script. Now you'll notice this block here um, can now be folded down like so. So that is code folding. It allows you basically to collapse down your code um, based off of the blocks it in. At the same time, I believe it should work on an if statement. Um, yeah, so you see there, as I have my new indentation level, we can fold that down. So basically any logical code block, uh, be it a function level, a condition level, etc., you can now collapse down that code. It, it makes it a lot easier basically just to have a large amount of code in a single file and to parse through it. So uh, that's code folding that has been added to the editor. But again, the biggest thing about the beta one um, release is the fact that it is now feature complete, at least from game from scratch channel perspective, because this means you will start seeing a brand new Godot 3 tutorial series coming on here live. Uh, and that gives us a great opportunity. If there's stuff you specifically want to see covered, do let me know in the comments down below and I will make sure that I have it in there if I can. Um, but for the most part, you probably can expect to see a lot of the same coverage I actually covered in my earlier Godot series, just updated for Godot 3. Godot, the previous tutorials were pretty comprehensive. We covered a lot of the stuff. But on top of that, I'm also going to get a little bit more into um, the visual programming, which is new, C Sharp programming, which is new, although I'm going to do uh, GD Script as the default language for all the tutorials, other than specifically when talking about those other two languages. Um, and you know, I'll probably get into a little bit more about deploying for the various platforms as well. Uh, but if there's something that you specifically want to see covered, please do let me know down below. Uh, also, as I said, I am working on a uh, electronic book in parallel. Once I get several chapters up, at least in rough form, I'm going to make that available for early purchase somewhere. If you have a recommendation on where I do that, be it like uh, Lean Pub or I don't, I don't actually know. It's one of those things I need to research now. Uh, do let me know those too. That would be greatly appreciated. And again, if you want to back me on Patreon. What I'm going to be doing is making rough chapters available as I publish them to patrons, probably as a PDF file. Um, so I think that's a nice little reward as you go. And once again, as I always do, all of the project files as I'm working on them will also be available to patrons. But don't worry, all code samples, once again, will be available on Game From Scratch. I will link them in every single um, tutorial as I do it. So as you're going through the tutorial video, all of the source code will be available for you. Uh, this is just the project files, makes things a little bit more convenient for patrons backers. Um, that's about it for now. Now, one last thing to cover off on the Godot 3 beta announcement. I will put this link down below. Now, do be aware that if you want to download the Godot 3 beta version, you're either going to have to build it from source and using the current master, or you use the links available in this here. If you scroll down, there's a section on downloads available here. You download either the classical version or the mono version for C sharp work. Um, and you pick for your corresponding platform. Just do be aware that if you go to the download section of the Godot website, those are for the older 2.x versions. There is no beta link off of that page just to kind of keep things less confusing. So if you do want to download a pre-compiled version of the beta, make sure you use the link that I will include down below. All right, that's it for now. Uh, please, again, your feedback is great, especially before I get into these projects too far. The more um, the more you give me up front, the uh, 
the more likely I am to be able to incorporate them. Um, so uh, let me know what you think. Are you interested in more Godot stuff? I got a feeling from the channel, I got a lot of Godot lovers out there. So uh, hopefully you guys are excited about this change. I've been waiting for months and months and months for beta to come so that I could finally start this series. So I'm pretty excited that it's there. And it's good timing too, you know, it's gonna be primary focus over the holidays. Now for you people that are not that into Godot, I apologize, the channel is going to be a little Godot centric for a while, um, but don't worry. I'm not a Godot only channel. There will be plenty of content for you guys too. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later.